What's going on guys? Welcome to part two of this little mini series, which is where to do your Slayer tasks and why. If you missed the first episode, you can find a link in the description below or in the top right of the screen you should see a card popping up now. In that first episode, I covered the Aberrant Spectres, Abyssal Demons, Ankus, Aviantes, Banshees, Black Demons, Black Dragons, and Bloodvelds. If you need to see where you should do those tasks and why you should do them in the places that they should be done, go ahead and check that one out and then come back to episode 2 to check out 8 more NPCs which I will be covering in this episode. So getting down to business, in this episode I'm going to be covering the Blue Dragons, Cave Kraken, Dagonoth, Dark Beast, Dust Devils, Fire Giants, Fossil Island Wyverns, and the Gargoyles. Alright everybody, so starting off, we're going to go ahead and start off with the Blue Dragons. I am going to continue going in alphabetical order for all of the NPCs that I have chosen for this little series. So with the Blue Dragons, you do have a few choices here. First off, we're going to start off with the Brutal Blue Dragons. Now the Brutal Blue Dragons are located in the Catacombs of Karend, which you can see on the screen now on the map. I suggest that you do the Brutal Blue Dragons if you're looking for more profit out of your Slayer task and not looking to really care about how much time that you spend on a task. Brutal Blue Dragons are pretty strong, they do have a somewhat high defense level and a lot of HP, but they will bring in a decent amount of profit. Now if you're going to do the Brutal Blue Dragons, I do suggest that you have a higher range level. I want to suggest at least level 90 range if you're going to be using a blowpipe, or probably level 80 ranged if you have a Dragon Hunter crossbow. And the reason for this is, like I said just a few seconds ago, because their defense level is pretty high and they do have a high amount of HP. If you don't have these stats, I suggest you stick to a couple of the other choices which I'm going to cover now. The next location that I'm going to cover is going to be the upper level of the Taverly Dungeon. Now up here in this upper level you can only kill the Blue Dragons if you are on a Slayer task, which makes it very convenient because Blue Dragons are generally packed because they are a decent money maker for lower level accounts. If you have a Blue Dragon task and your levels aren't too high or you don't have those range levels to do the Brutal Blue Dragons, at least in a somewhat quick manner, you're definitely going to want to come up here to knock this task out fast without any interruptions. And last but not least, if you are looking for a very fast Blue Dragons test, you're going to want to kill them in the normal area of the Taverly Dungeon, which is on the screen now. Now in the northern area, you can set up a cannon, and you can cannon the baby Blue Dragons, as they are a lot weaker, and they do have a lot less HP, so they will go down a lot faster. Now in the southern area that is highlighted here, these are all the bigger Blue Dragon spawns, which are level 111. You can also set up a cannon here if you're looking for faster money making with your Slayer. You can set up the cannon, take out quite a few big Blue Dragons at a time, and pick up the Hides, Bones, Bank, and return quickly. Use the Pipe Shortcut if you have 70 Agility. If you don't have 70 Agility, you're going to have to run all the way around, use your Dusty Key on the gate, and then enter. Moving on, we are going to cover the Cave Kraken next. Now, some people might be wondering, why is the Cave Kraken in this video? Well, the Cave Krakens you can kill at level 87 Slayer, and there are two variants. There is a normal NPC variant, and there is also a boss variant. The Cave Krakens are located in the Kraken Cove, which is south of the Piscatoris Fishing Colony. Now, I always suggest that if you have level 87 Slayer, you should always be killing the Cave Kraken boss. The regular Cave Krakens, they don't really have that great of a drop table. The Cave Kraken boss is one of the easiest bosses in old school RuneScape to kill. The only recommendation I have for this is at least level 75 magic for a Trident of the Seas or a Trident of the Swamp or the Sanguinesti staff. But as far as lower level magic, you can do it at a lower level magic, and if so, I suggest you have the Iben staff for Iben Blast because it does hit decent. It is quite a bit slower than the other three staffs that I mentioned, but you should always be doing the Cave Kraken boss because of the drops. Regardless of your magic level, even if you are, let's say, level 65 or 70 and you're using an Iben staff, you are almost always going to profit. These uh, bosses, they do have a very good drop table, and most of their drops do profit you. There are a few troll drops on the table, like seaweed, buckets, and pirate boots, but they aren't seen too often, and if you spend a whole task of 150 or 200 here, you could be seeing somewhere in between 1.5 to 3 mil profit, depending on your magic level. Next up is going to be the Dagonoths. Now, I'm not really including many bosses in this series. The Cave Kraken boss was an exception because it is so easy. Now for the Dagonoths, if you do have the levels and you do have the time that you want to spend on a Dagonoth task, you can go kill the Dagonoth Kings, but I'm not really going to cover those. Now for 
a lot of experience very quickly, you're going to want to be doing the Dagonoths in the Lighthouse Dungeon. Now, the dungeon down here in the Lighthouse has a ton of Dagonoth spawns. You can set up a cannon, go to town, and probably finish a task in somewhere around 20 minutes. This is going to be your fastest choice for experience. Another location is going to be in the Catacombs of Karend. All of the Dagonoths in the Catacombs of Karen use the melee attack style, so all you're going to need to do here is pray melee, bring some prayer potions, and go to town. They are aggressive, so you can AFK quite a bit. So if you're looking for more of that AFK Slayer experience, where you don't have to reload a cannon or pay attention to your HP, you can come to the Catacombs, kill the Dagonoths here, and you will be looking forward to some Dark Totem drops here as well for those Scotizo kills down the road. Next up is going to be the Dark Beasts. Now, the Dark Beasts are kind of an annoying task. Their drops aren't too stupendous. They do drop the Dark Bow, but that's not really worth that much anymore. The Dark Beasts are unlocked once you start the Morning's End Part 2 quest. Now, the Dark Beast tasks, you can get a very low amount of them unless you extend the task. If you extend the task, then you'll start seeing over 100 per task. But if you're looking for quick points, I don't recommend doing that. So if you want quick points, you're going to want to not extend the Dark Beast task because you will only get somewhere between like 10 and 15 of them. You can take a cannon over into West Ardoin in the Mourner's Headquarters, set up your cannon, kill these very quickly, and it's easy Slayer points if you're trying to get fast tasks done. Now if you're not trying to get fast tasks done and you want an AFK experience, you can unlock the extension for the Dark Beast and head over to the Catacombs of Karend. There are two Dark Beast spawns in the Catacombs of Karen, and if you stand right in the middle of these spawns, generally you won't have to move unless you get some loot to pick up. So if you're looking for that AFK experience, once again you're going to want to come to the Catacombs of Karen, and if you're lucky you will see some Dark Totem pieces drop. Next up on the list is going to be the Dust Devils. Now the Dust Devils are found in two locations, and the first location that I am going to cover is going to be in the Catacombs of Karen. Now in the Catacombs of Karen, the Dust Devils are a bit stronger, and if you're looking for that fast experience, you're going to want to be bursting or barraging the Dust Devils in the southern chamber in the Catacombs of Karen. You can come here, knock out a task anywhere in between 30, in 45 minutes depending on your magic level with the spells burst or barrage i do highly recommend this if you are speed slaying and you're trying to get experience very fast now if you are meleeing i also recommend to come to the catacombs of karen because in the northern dust devil chamber there are five spawns you can attack each one and then afk for a couple minutes while they all die pick up your loot and repeat the process if you're looking for some decent melee XP, this is definitely going to be the place that you want to come because it is fast XP as they do have a somewhat low defense level. They're easy kills and XP stacks up very quickly over time. Now the other place that I'm not really going to cover is going to be in the smoke dungeon near Polnivniich. I'm not sure if I said that right. But down here the dust devils are somewhat lower level. They are easier to kill and you can set up a cannon there, but I don't really recommend it because it is pretty far away. And the next NPC is going to be Fire Giants. Now the Fire Giants do have a few different areas that you can kill them in. I'm going to start off with the Stronghold Slayer Cave. Now in the Stronghold Slayer Cave, it is a multi-combat zone and you are able to set up a cannon here. If you're looking for very fast XP and you want to get this task out of the way quickly, you're going to want to come here to the Stronghold Slayer Cave, which is located in the Gnome Stronghold. If you're looking for the task to be done and get experience in a more specific skill, you're going to want to come to the Catacombs of Karen. The Catacombs of Karen is also a multi-combat zone. The Fire Giants are a little bit stronger here and they will yield a little bit more XP dedicated to a specific skill. So if you want to train your attack strength or defense, you can come here to kill them. You will also be seeing some Dark Totem Piece drops. There is also a safe spot for range in this area, so if you're looking to train ranged, you can also come here. One more area that I'm not really going to cover is going to be underneath of the Backstorian Falls Waterfall. Now here is a usually unpopulated area, so if you're looking to get away from other people and you want to do your task in peace, I suggest you go there, but I don't have a map for it. If you've done the Waterfall Quest, you should definitely know where this place is. The next NPC on my list is going to be a little bit controversial. Now the next one is going to be Fossil Island Wyverns, and there are four different variations of these. Taloned Wyverns, Spitting Wyverns, Long-Tailed Wyverns, and Ancient Wyverns. If you are lower combat, I suggest just skipping this task altogether. If you're a higher combat, I suggest only doing the Ancient Wyverns because they're the only ones that are actually going to net you a decent amount of profit. 
And if you can't be bothered doing this task at all, I do suggest spending the 500 Slayer points to just cancel this task altogether. Now spending the 500 Slayer points will not count against your block tasks list, which is great. This is just four tasks, or I'm sorry, one task that you can eliminate because if you do get assigned this task, you can kill any variation of the Fossil Island Wyverns. So just to recap, if you're of a lower combat level, I suggest you just skip this task altogether. If you are higher combat, I suggest doing the Ancient Wyverns, and if you just can't be bothered with this task, spend the 500 points, cancel it completely, and just don't ever have to deal with it again. And the last NPC that I'm going to be covering for this episode is going to be the Gargoyles. Now the Gargoyles are a very heavily camped NPC because they are decent GP per hour, even if you're off of a Slayer task. So if you do get Gargoyles as a Slayer task, I suggest you head to the Mortania Slayer Tower and go straight down to the basement. In the basement, you are only going to be able to kill the gargoyles if you were on a slayer task. So this makes it a lot easier to not deal with either people who are just trying to make money or the gargoyle bots because I have seen a lot of those. And I will suggest that if you're looking for the pet, you can do the grotesque guardians, which is the gargoyle boss. Their drop table is not very good. You can actually make more money per hour at the normal gargoyles than you can at the grotesque guardians boss so the only reason that i say you should do the boss is if you're trying to get the pet now they recently have had an hp nerf down to 400 from i think it was 650 so it is a little bit quicker of a kill but their drop table still isn't very great but that is going to wrap up part two of this little mini series this is another eight npcs that i have covered like I said earlier, if you have not seen part one, please go ahead and check that out. I do have one more part in this little mini series, which will be coming out soon to cover eight more controversial NPCs. If you like this video, please go ahead and leave a thumbs up down below. They really help the video spread around. If you have any questions or comments, you can also leave those down below and I'll try to get to every single one that I possibly can. And last but not least, if you have not done so, please tap that subscribe button on your way out. All of your subscribes mean a ton to me, and your support is very much appreciated. Until next time, guys, take it easy.